the failure of the left had a major role in uh, you know bringing these people to power i am someone who is really sad about the weakening of the congress really because the congress was the only possible national alternative to the right wing a good majority of marxists have mistaken marxism for rationalism but they should understand the religion <music>
Saitya Academy should be as autonomous as possible. Uh, not that it can be entirely autonomous because it is, you know, it runs on a government grant and so it's not easy for it to be completely autonomous. But I have experienced that kind of autonomy in the Central Academy where I was uh, the executive head. Uh, because the government never came in, uh, they never asked, uh, asked us to do anything. Uh, no, pro uh, I mean, neither to do a program nor to have their logo or any kind of publicity on our books or anything like that. So obviously I felt uh, a little bad about it. And then I spoke to the secretary and I said, uh, this is not done. And so finally, uh, we couldn't withdraw the books because, you know, the, a few copies were printed, not many fortunately. And so the only thing we could do was to, you know, to cover this uh, logo with something else. So we had uh, a, a, a picture of the Sahitya Academy pasted <laughs> on that and that, that uh, position now. Uh, so, but, the, but uh, I'm not worried about this particular incident, but the, the general state of uh, cultural institutions in, in the state, uh, which I believe should enjoy you know, a, a, a quite a lot of uh, autonomy to do the things they want to do, uh, to do the meaningful things they want to do. So this kind of intervention doesn't do any good either to the government or to the institution. And after that, uh, uh, two ministers called me, Rajiv, who happens to be my student, and also uh, the culture minister. Uh, and he said the government had never given such an instruction <laughs> and, and that was a second shock that is just done, you know, without, without even the government's uh, telling the academy to do it. Uh, so then I tried to find out and I found out it was an officer who was in charge of uh, publications who did this, who is now, who is not now there, He's, he, he just retired before that. Maybe he wanted to please the government or whatever or maybe he belonged to the party. Uh, anyway, uh, that was a distasteful uh, incident <laughs> to to be, I mean, to cut it short. <laughs> was there some kind of uh, miscommunication between the secretary and the chairman, or some kind of communication gap? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it that because it is not necessary that because the secretary is the administrative head of the academy, and it is not very necessary that the secretary asks for the president's permission for all all kinds of small things uh, the academy does. But I only felt he could have asked me if he came to know this and if he also shared my feelings, which perhaps he did, uh, he, sh he could have consulted me. And because this could have been done in a much lower tone, uh, in the sense, you know, you, you could add a sentence in the preface saying that this is part of a special scheme, you know, sanctioned by the government or celebrating the second year of the government or whatever. <laughs> no, I have heard this slogan, but, but, but I wouldn't again equate them. It is like equating uh, the state, central government with the state government. Uh, so, because the state government's powers are ultimately limited, this is a very small state where, you know, no, uh, nobody can, can be as powerful as the, as the Prime Minister. Uh, those, no, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, uh, I, would, I wouldn't make that kind of a comparison. Uh, so, but we, uh, that does not mean that we need not criticize any kind of dictatorial or authoritarian tendency that we may fi find. The tactics that we are going to show right now, the kind of tactics being played by the right wing and the center, uh -huh. those are being uh, implicated, are they pretty replicated in the evening? Mm -hmm. Those are being done here also. Especially in the case of police. Police, martial law, you can look at the Adhigara prayer with the Kurs, Adhigara in the repressive state apparatus and the Eto, we live there on the policing. Yes. Policing in the Gaia today, I would government, probably UAP or the Laka. Yes, I yeah, I have a, I have a post and I still oppose uh, uh, these. You know, there are false cases uh, hoisted, and uh, the kind uh, and the police behavior generally. I I I cannot pinpoint. I cannot say uh, say exactly what the reason is because one of the just uh, one of the reasons that the leftists you know often put forward is that a lot of RSS people have entered the police. So that could be an excuse and that could well be a reason also for uh, because uh, it can easily make the government unpopular. Uh, not that I have bought it completely, but 
it is not an it is not impossible looking at the strategies uh, of the sung it is not impossible that a lot of them have got into the police force also and they create problems here and there so that you know uh, the uh, the government and especially the as the chief minister is in charge of uh, i mean is or the home ministry also he also gets a, a kind of bad name uh, so i am not saying that it is so but that is one possibility otherwise well there are there are failures you know there are uh failures and i am uh, because i i have always believed and still believe that you know these these uh, rules like the uapa must, must go i mean they have no uh, place in a democratic society at all uh, the, the sedition act the, so there are many things that um, you know uh, even gandhi had opposed the sedition act at that time and we need to oppose these acts and as long as they are there uh you cannot fearlessly voice your opinion because you can any any time be called a traitor you can any time be arrested and so what uh, so many things up to the, the, what the, what was done to grow wasu so i have been following it very closely and i also feel that uh, this is not something a communist government uh, should do or should have been doing uh, so there are there are certainly there are mistakes there are uh, i mean there are negatives there are points where we need to be critical but uh, uh, but what i mean is only that we but we need not dismiss uh, the party altogether saying that uh, it is irrelevant it is not because it still upholds uh, because i look not at the ministers i look at the common people and when i look at the common people who still have a lot of faith in the party and you know sometimes it is a blind kind of faith but still a faith in the party believing that you know these are the people who stand for us and stand for justice as long as that those people are there uh, the party cannot go wrong beyond a point there is a corrective force somewhere somewhere beneath so there are mistakes certainly uh, but uh, uh, it is still a force in in kerala at least it is still a force. even though at the national level it may be a minor force but in kerala it is still a major kind of force and people uh, have faith in that so they may um uh, keep them or reject them or again bring them and uh, and that's what kerala's people have been doing and doing wisely i would say so that no no party would become very arrogant you know even even two terms can make a party very arrogant so so uh, and three terms can destroy it as we saw it in bengal the sort of an idol idol worship of a leader like right? as he said in center and the state is no that, that right? happened you cannot blame the leader alone for that you need you need, you need also look at the, the, there is a kind of psychology of hero worship uh, which is that work in almost all the uh, you know you know in all the parties you know in you know, all all kinds of organizations there is a kind of hero worship um uh, so uh, i i am not say uh, because i don't think that the leader is saying come and worship me but people go and prostrate you know fall prostrate at his feet and you cannot blame the leader for that that can be systematic I, also the leader creates a way in which only he will be the person who calls the shots then there is no other option for the other person to um well <laughs> ജനറലിസ്റ്റ്സ്റ്റ് <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and as long as uh, the marxist party does not critique stalin and stalinism uh, there is this danger uh, of uh, the personality cult coming up in various forms and from various and even unexpected corners so that is something one need to be worry about do you think this stalinism still exists in the cpm hmm? do you think this stalinism still exists in the cpm and its leaders stalinist streak yeah it, it is so as long as you find you know marx engel stalin lenin uh, lenin stalin uh, on the on the on the, all the billboards and all that uh, so it seems 
uh, his head is there among the, all the all the, among the other heads so so uh, so i wouldn't uh, reject that completely that uh, there is no streak of stalinism and because even even now when, when i or somebody else speaks against stalin there are a lot of people who keep defending stalin because of him the of the world war was won and the fascism was defeated and all that even though there were various uh, you know chances that came together to defeat uh, uh, to defeat hitler or lead him to suicide it was not that stalin alone fought uh, so uh, so uh, uh, there are people who still defend stalin uh, Stalin might have had his positive point. At that particular point of time, he might have taken a correct stand. Even though later, you have seen them shaking hands also, the same Stalin and Hitler. I mean, there, there was a point when they... Mm. So, uh, but then yes, Stalinism can be a, a danger to any democratic party, not only Mars party, because it is a, it's an anti-democratic kind of authoritarian uh, um, trend or tendency, which can, which can harm any kind of party. when the issue of uh, faith comes mm. or spirituality comes there seems to be there is uh, what is the this a, a, a mismatch yes. between yeah, you are you are very very right uh, because somehow i think a, a good majority of marxists have mistaken marxism for rationalism which it is not in fact lenin spent a lot of his time and his voice speaking against that kind of a very empiricist very external kind of rationalism uh, and uh, you know uh, lenin or any other major uh, communist leader uh, has uh, uh, has not spoken against religion if 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 he has said, if marx said it is the opium of the people in the next sentence he also said it is a kind of solace you know so uh, but that part is so very often ignored so uh, uh, i think uh, for example you know gandhi would be the best example of a person who understood what you call the indian ethos or the indian indian mind uh, and um, mainly because marxists somehow uh, failed to take into account uh, several of the institutions that ultimately constitute the indian indian populace uh, they also fail to uh, take in uh, the, the the ethos that you are speaking about uh, that is one uh, they did not recognize they they were seeing it but they were not seeing it also religions they spoke about class but they seldom spoke about caste about which uh, ambedkar uh, spoke so so meaningfully and and movingly the problem is of marrying that kind of uh, uh, what looks like an individual spirituality with uh, social service and this is precisely where somebody like sri narayana guru or gandhi you know they they come in and they become extremely important because they were spiritual but for them spirituality was not running away to a cave in the himalayas and and doing penance and you know get to get to get one's own salvation but uh, so so gandhi often repeatedly said his penance was among the people so and and uh, narayana guru also you know tried to bring the uh, interpret advaita in a completely different way from uh, Sh- uh, from the way in which shankara interpreted that uh, it means uh, there is no difference between you and me that uh, i thou uh, that uh, separate the divide uh, vanished in his uh, in his thinking so as long as you are me uh, it is in my own interest that i also look after you and i serve you so this is the essence i mean this of course is a simplification but this is the essence of uh, the way in which uh, guru understood advaita so i think we need to learn a lot from people like gandhi or sinarayana guru and maybe there are other people who uh tried to combine uh an understanding of the inward uh, and essential spirituality of the human being uh with uh the uh, the, the, mo- the the slogan of social service uh, or even identifying it with that even i didn't uh, even say even seeking uh, their own salvation among the people by working among the people and so uh, so that uh, so without that kind of a, an understanding 
I believe it is impossible for anyone, uh, any political party or any organization to work in a country like India. I am not saying that they should become religious. That is a different kind of thing altogether. Not that they should join a religion or they should form religious organizations, but they should understand the religion. This is a very different kind of a, 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 you know, proposition. Like T.S. Eliot uh, 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 says, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to read uh, religious poetry, you need not be religious, but you need to understand the state of a person who believes in religion. So that is all I, I am asking uh, my Marxist friends and you know other friends who don't believe in religion, uh, that you need to understand why they believe in a religion and what is the kind of the what is the approach they have towards uh, you know the you uh, towards life and life of other beings and uh, and life of stars and the life of the universe itself. So I think that. Uh, that dimension is missing. Uh, that is a base. Uh, that is basically missing in Marxist thinking itself. And and secondly, especially in a context like India, uh, you really need to understand the, the the important role that religion is playing, negative or positive, whatever that that role in religion has been playing in people's lives. So without recognizing religion, without recognizing the realizing the uh, existence of caste. You can never completely comprehend uh, Indian society. Left as a political party, in the practical sense, left need not stick on with. No, no, the no, no. I don't think they really do. Uh, I mean, because you know, you, if you look at uh, the actual practicing Marxists, you find main, many of them are believers. They go to Shabarimala, they go to different kinds of temples, and in their families, they have people who believe in uh, you know different religions and follow the follow all the rituals of the religion and all that. So, uh, so, so why should you have a uh, you say in public? Uh, you know, why should you renounce religion in public and practice it in private? It is happening somewhere under our feet. Um, it, uh, probably it is not marching along the, uh, I recently wrote somewhere, it is not marching along the highways but it is gradually creeping in through the by lanes. So, uh, because uh, it is trying to reinterpret, reread even our myths and our rituals, and including the Onam myth, you know, which has become a Vamana Puja kind of thing, uh, which is one way of uh, uh, giving it a very, very negative and Brahminical kind of interpretation. Uh, or, they, uh, they, or they create uh, uh, divisions uh, among the various kinds of communities and in Kerala it means also uh, various kinds of caste organizations trying to have a sway over you know SNDP or NSS or such organizations and all that uh, who refuse to take a position apparently because even recently the NSS leader said we are not taking a position and not taking a position can be an extremely dangerous kind of position uh, because it can, it can mean at any time whoever is in power we can we can um, support them or we can move towards them and so that is how they are coming uh, coming up in uh, in Kerala we are uh, uh, rather encroaching I mean uh, coming in through these uh, through the margins through these caste organizations and also by promoting uh, communal communal rivalry in in various Ways, sometimes very very subtle ways for example between the Muslims and the Christians creating a divide uh, between the minorities one of, is one of the best tactics that the majority majority in politics can have so that also you find you know they are playing uh, in uh, on, on that on those lines too creating a division between the Christians and the Muslims and they, because uh, it seems perhaps they already have some kind of a suspicion inherited from the Crusades uh, times and uh, they, are, they seem to be uh, playing on that kind of a uh, some, uh, some subtle and perhaps unconscious uh, in, uh, historical sense or instinct and creating a division between them. So that is how they are coming up, creating communal rivalry on the one hand in the minorities and pleasing some of the communities and community organizations and reinterpreting or rereading rereading myths and uh, fables and all those legends associated with Kerala in, in various ways. 
which were so far understood uh, positively uh, now being uh, often posited negatively So do you think this continuance in power, both at the centre and at the state, mm. does it harm, uh, you know, the the, uh, the outlook of a government to be more tolerant? Um, like we have it in centre continuous ten years. Here I wouldn't. Also. I wouldn't. As I as I said at the very beginning, I wouldn't compare the the central government with the. Uh, the state government you know in our federal polity the center certainly has uh, greater powers and it can even you know um, isolate a state it can it can uh, uh, oppress a state in different ways by not giving the due grants as as it is doing now uh, but uh, by by often uh, imposing their programs on the state governments and all that so i wouldn't uh, compare the central government with the state government the, the central government is what you can generally call the state in the marxian sense but not the state government so it is just a small part of a, a, a whole mechanism of governance in the whole country uh, but uh, it is true that there is there is a growing intolerance in uh, in both the at the, the state level and the and the central level only the intolerance at the central level uh, uh, happens to be dangerous and it could it could be you know a kind of uh, it could lead to uh, proper fascism uh, i am not saying that it proper fascism is not already there but then uh, uh, it's almost uh, we are, i mean it, it's at the doorstep it, it is at the doorstep yes ab- not absolute fascism because because still this democracy thing is you know is a kind of problem so i i would still call it a rehearsal a full dress rehearsal of uh, fascism <laughs> അതാണ് ഈ കഴിഞ്ഞ കുറച്ച് നാളായി വളരെ ഗ്രാജുവലി തുടങ്ങിയൊരു മൂവ്മെന്റ് പെട്ടെന്ന് സെൻസ് the failure of the left had a major role in uh, you know bringing these people to power i mean if you look at uh, if you look at it episodically uh, see you can uh, you can imagine a time when jyoti basu would perhaps have been the prime minister of india and it was a possibility it was not that it was a an utopian dream it was a possibility and it was at that point of time i have always spoken out against that at uh, that was the time when from the first uh, you know uh, that united uh, uh, i mean if, uh, yeah if a government uh, the marxist party for example decided to come out uh, on a reason which at least to the people looked flimsy uh, you know uh, it's true you can uh, you can say you speak of ultimate communism and so we are against war so now nuclear policy and all that but people didn't understand i don't think even now they have understood why these people came out of that that kind of a government when they were close to power when they could have done very good yeah. things imagine a situation where uh, the uh, the left or or the um, uh, the marxist party had not come out of that government i do not think the fall of the congress would have been um, exp- i mean so soon so 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 fast uh in that would have been a completely different scenario maybe one time maybe after uh, 30 years or so these people might have come to power it would not never have been so immediate so that was a major a real himalayan blunder that the party a party or a, a section of the party which wanted this committed if they had not come out uh it would have been a different scenario because i am i am someone who is really sad about the weakening of the congress really uh very genuinely and i keep expressing that i keep saying that on my facebook and everywhere because i believe because the congress was the only possible national alternative to the right wing the only possible uh, and and the left uh, could uh, could have been and should have been a part of that and maybe the left would have also gained the congress would have gained and the country certainly would have gained out of that but so uh, but so coming out of uh, pulling out of uh, you know that government was a was a major major blunder and that was the beginning of the fall of the left fall of the congress and the rise of the bjp three tragedies in i mean, I mean to, uh, that happened together എന്റെ 
കഴിയുന്നത്ര കുറേ വായിക്കുന്നു ഇന്ന് കൃത്യമായിട്ട് അങ്ങനെ എനിക്ക് കമ്പയർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല കാരണം ചില ചില പീരീഡ്സ് ഉണ്ട് ധാരാളമായിട്ട് വായിക്കുന്ന ചില പീരീഡ്സ് ഇങ്ങനത്തെ യാത്രകളും പലതരം എൻഗേജ്മെൻറ്റ് വരും അതിൻ്റെ സമയത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു കുറവിൻ്റെ പ്രശ്നം കുറച്ചുണ്ട് നൗ നൗ ദൈ ആം ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ഓൾഡ് കുറച്ച് അവർ കുറച്ചും കൂടി ഉറങ്ങേണ്ടി വരുന്നുണ്ട് അത് ഡോക്ടറും പറയും എനിക്കൊരു ഒരു ന്യൂറോളജിക്കൽ ഇഷ്യൂ പ്രശ്നമുണ്ട് ഒരു ഒരു ചെറിയൊരു അമ്നേഷ്യ പോലത്തെ ഒരു ചെറിയൊരു പീരീഡിന് സോ ഹി വാ അപ്പോൾ ഹി വാണ്ട്സ് മീ ടു സ്ലീപ്പ് ഫോർ അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് സെവൻ അവേഴ്സ് അറ്റ് നൈറ്റ് പറ്റുമെങ്കിൽ ഉച്ചയ്ക്ക് ഇത്തിരി നേരം എന്നൊക്കെ പറയും അപ്പോൾ അതുകൊണ്ടൊക്കെയുള്ള കുറച്ച് സമയക്കുറവിൻ്റെ ഉണ്ട് അതർവൈസ് ഐ കീപ് ഐ കീപ് ട്രാക്ക് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ആസ് ഫാർ ആസ് പോസിബിൾ റീഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇപ്പോൾ പക്ഷേ നമ്മൾ കുറേ പുസ്തകങ്ങളുടെ എണ്ണം വർദ്ധിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ അപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ബുക്ക് പ്രൈസ് കിട്ടിയത് അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ വരുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് തന്നെ അവർ പ്രൈസ് കിട്ടുന്ന ആളുകൾ ബുക്ക് പ്രൈസ് കിട്ടുന്ന ആളുകൾ അവരെ പലരെയും മുമ്പ് വായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടാവും ചില ആളുകൾ പുതുതായിട്ട് അതിൽ കൂടിയൊക്കെ ഡിസ്കവർ ചെയ്യും അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ വളരെ കൂടുതൽ സെലക്റ്റീവ് ആവുന്നുണ്ട് റീഡിങ് അതിനൊരു കാരണം എൻ്റെ ഏജാണ് ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഹാവ് എ ഫീലിംഗ് ഐ ഡോണ്ട് ഹാവ് മച്ച് ടൈം വെറുതെ സമയം കളയുന്ന സമയമില്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് വളരെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ടത് വായിച്ചാൽ മതി എന്നുള്ള ഒരു തോന്നലുണ്ട് സോ ഐ ഐ ഐ ഹാവ് ബിക്കം മോർ ചൂസി ഇൻ റീഡിങ് മുമ്പ് അതും ഇതൊക്കെ വായിക്കുമായിരുന്നു ഇപ്പം